Before we get to episode 128 and the riveting topics of the episode with my words of wisdom, shout outs and complaints, I'd like to take a second to ask for your support for the Keystone chapter of the National Federation of the Blind of Pennsylvania. Go to ICan'tSeeYou.com slash coffee. That will take you to the White Cane Coffee Company website. Once there, make a purchase. The Keystone chapter earns a 10% commission. I really appreciate your support. Thank you so much. From Studio B in Swarthmore, this is the I Can't See You podcast with David. It's like blind people for dummies. Hello there, and welcome to episode 128 of the I Can't See You podcast. My name is David, at David Benj on all the socials. I really appreciate you joining me for today's episode. And uh, I've got a couple of things to talk about, but before we get into it, I did want to give a shout out to Annie. Annie reached out to me on Facebook uh, and messaged me. We're not friends, um, but she did message me because I guess she's seen some of uh, the pictures that I post, whether it's there or Instagram. And um, she always said, she said, I'm always smiling in all the pictures. And I, and I, and I appreciate that because I do always try to smile for them. Again, they're probably not with Duchesne markers or anything, but I am smiling in, I guess, most of the pictures. Um, Annie and I, I've known Annie almost 50 years. We went to elementary school together um, and graduated high school together in 1982, so it, it wasn't yesterday. <laughs> and it's interesting because I started off at one elementary school for first grade, and because of my uh, visual impairment, I ended up at another elementary school within the same school district because they set up a visually impaired slash blind uh, resource room. And it was kind of cool the way it worked out where I was in a regular classroom for a good chunk of the day, but I was also in this resource room uh, which ranged from every uh, every grade in the school. So elementary school around here goes uh, first grade through fifth grade. And so there were there were some of us in each grade. Um, and as I was in elementary school, I, each year I was in the resource room a little bit less. Um, you know, it started off where, you know, I was it was probably a 60 40 split with the regular class and the resource room class. And, you know, it dwindled down from there. Now, there were some cool things that, you know, at the end of the year, you know, I ended up having two picnics, <laughs> one with one with all the kids who, who were visually impaired. And um, the cool thing was the uh, the teacher, her name was Miss DiCuccio, uh, her parents owned a horse farm uh, probably around an hour away from uh, Delaware County, where where I live and still live. Um, and so we got to go there and it was always a lot of fun. There was a big, wide open space. And, you know, of course, as a kid, though, the drive seemed like it took us forever. Um, but uh, but thank you, Annie, for reaching out. Uh, it was very nice uh, catching up with you and hearing the uh, kind words you had to say. So I appreciate that. And again, I'm at David Benj on all the socials. And, uh, you know, message me on Facebook or uh, DM me on Instagram, reach out on Twitter and so forth. Um, Clubhouse, to be honest, I still haven't really done much with. And um, I, I don't know if that's not already over. <laughs> um, and also on LinkedIn. Sorry, I forgot LinkedIn. And and I've been catching up with someone there. I've I, uh, someone from Italy, uh, who is we have a mutual friend, and we connected uh, via that mutual friend. Uh, and it's you know it's been kind of cool to uh, uh, to go back and forth uh, with this person. So and I think I mentioned her last week. Her name is Maria Rita. Um, but again, reach out on social media, or again, you could always just email me. I can't see you podcast at gmail.com. I can't see you sounds like a whole sentence. It's only seven letters long. I C A N T C U podcast at gmail.com. And again, if you have show ideas, questions, comments, uh, good or bad, uh, 646 926 6350. For the time being, I'm hoping I still have that, <laughs> that phone number next week. I've been working on trying to keep it. I have to work a little harder because I still haven't locked it in. Uh, so hopefully that will be the case. Otherwise, I will be back next week with a different phone number for you to try. Uh, but I hope to keep that one because I've had that one since the beginning. And um, obviously, it, you know, it's in, in all the other episodes. If somebody were to try and call like a month from now and I don't have that, um, that would be an issue, I'm guessing. <laughs> 
So a couple of things to talk about this week. As I mentioned last week, um, we were car shopping and we thought we had a deal for a car that was right around the corner from our house at a Nissan dealership, literally uh, two tenths of a mile walk, um, three tenths of a mile, maybe. Um, and we had an agreement on a price and then we found the next model up that we want, really wanted. Uh, we bought a Nissan Murano. Um, we wanted the Platinum version because the Platinum had the navigation in it, whereas all the other models did not. And the salesperson that, you know, tried to convince us to buy the one down from the Platinum said, well, you know, you use, you pair it with you pair it with your iPhone and you don't need it. And okay, that's true for a lot of us, but Liz wasn't comfortable doing that. And there were some other, other more, more important options that, um, that we liked about the, uh, the platinum over the other one. Um, but for Liz, the navigation was probably the most important. So we made the agreement to buy the car, but didn't sign anything as I mentioned last week. And when we got home, when I got home that night and I was going through my emails, I saw this one for a platinum edition of the Murano, the 2021 Murano, at a dealership that's, I don't know, 10 or 15 miles away. And it was for less than the, the SL version of the Murano around the corner. Now, that convenience, you know, I, I guess we're going to find out how convenient it is as Liz goes, you know, the 10 or 15 miles to take it to the dealer for, you know, the free state inspection and all that stuff. Um, you know, because, you know, that's, that's a pretty big chunk of time away, uh, when you're driving to and from, as opposed to, you know, dropping it off, you know, uh, the day before and just walking home or dropping it off that morning, whatever. Um, so, you know, we lost that convenience, but saved, you know, probably a couple thousand dollars, um, and, and we went back, I went back to the person and I said, look, you know, we found this car, you know, I expected her to come back. Well, you know, maybe we can make a deal on this one. Nothing just, okay. You know, I asked for a refund on the, on the, uh, the, um, deposit that we had put down on it because like I said, we didn't sign anything. We weren't locked in or anything. So, so we went and we picked up the car last Friday and, um, it's very nice. I mean, Again, like I said in last week's episode, I didn't want to buy a car. You know, we were really happy with <laughs> all the dings and dents and scratches and scrapes um, that were on our 2010 Honda Pilot that had 219,925 miles on it when we traded it in. Um, you know, we have Ziggy who, you know, whether he wants to or not or means to or not is probably going to you know, rip into the seats at some point, whether it's with his claws, whether he's trying to get a piece of food that he's dropped when we're going somewhere, you know, so, you know, I thought maybe if we could last like maybe a year before we could get it, before we had to get a new car. But as I mentioned last week, there was some repairs that we were going to need to make that was worth more than the car was worth. There were more, would have cost us more than the car's worth. So, so we got the car, we picked it up, and for one thing, and I thought, at first I, d I didn't think too much of it. Um, the sales guy spent a lot of time with us going over the features, and, and I'll get back to that in a second. More so than anyone has ever spent with us on a car. And I thought that was very cool. Because usually, and I remember with the pilot, you know, they just tell us what's on it and you get in it and you drive it away and you kind of figure it out. And, you know, there were some features I remembered on the pilot that we didn't, we didn't even know about for years. And then we thought, oh, it does that. That's very cool. <laughs> um, and, and obviously there's going to be things on this car, the same thing. You know, as I've always told people, you know, back in the day when they were afraid to touch a computer and I said, you know, and I'm showing them how to use it or do something with it. I'm like, look, you just play around with it. You're not going to kill it. You're not going to break it. Just try it. And, um, you know, and that's, you know, that's what was happening with, you know, when we buy a car, we just start pushing buttons and that's the, you know, that's, you, you learn how things work and what things do. And, um, so, 
he's going over everything with us before we. I don't. I want to. Don't want to say before we sign the papers, but you know, once we signed the papers, he took us back outside. Now it was a drizzly day. It wasn't raining, um, and there was a. Uh, they had a guy there. His name was Paul. They had this guy, and he was. I don't know if he was what you would call him. He basically would. Um, he was watching the lot. Like if somebody came in and needed to speak with a salesperson, you know, um, you know, he could answer some basic questions, but then would take it to a salesperson if, if you had more questions or, you know, to set somebody up, uh, you know, basically like an attendant almost. And, you know, when we went back out to get, uh, to put stuff in the car while we were waiting to pay for the car, and I'll get to that in a second, um, you know, um, you know, he, he walked out, he had an umbrella for us to walk under, and we're like, no, we're okay, it's not really raining that hard. He's like, no, 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 you know, your customers, da-da-da-da-da. And, um, you know, he was very nice um, and very helpful um, while Liz was learning all about the car. And this, this I don't want to say it upset me, but I guess it did. Um, you know, we go outside with the sales, the sales guy, his name was Robert, and... Um, we're going over everything, you know, after we, after we paid for, after we paid for it. Um, and, you know, signed, and again, I, my name's not on the car. It's, it's Liz's car. Um, and I'm not sure that was the right way to do it, but that's how we did it. Um, and I guess I don't need to be on the car because it doesn't, it doesn't, it doesn't I'm not going to drive it. Um, I, I don't think. <laughs> Uh, I am insured, so I guess I could. <laughs> I'm not licensed, however. Um, you know, so after all was said and done and we signed all the different papers with the with the money guy, um, we went out and Robert, you know, we're walking towards the car and he's like, okay, I'm going to show you how to use it. And he said, he turns to me and he says, I'm going to, I'm going to sit up front here and, and show, and show her how to do everything. And I guess it's partially my fault, but I could have gotten in the back seat, um, although they the the front doors were left open for a while, so I would have had to walk around another car to get to it. Um, and and I kind of felt like I kind of didn't feel invited <laughs> to that party. And he probably spent ten or fifteen minutes um, going over everything. And you know during this time you know i was standing there you know basically just in front of the car just standing there just you know i don't want to say twiddling my thumbs but i was just standing there and paul this guy who i found out just then and there it was his first day came over and just started talking to me cuz you know he saw that i was just standing there and it wasn't busy at the dealership so you know so he and i talked and we talked about <laughs> We talked about a few things. We talked about fantasy football and football in general. Uh, we talked about uh, house versus condo because <laughs> he's he's he and his girlfriend are thinking about buying one or the other, um, and uh, and stuff like that. And and I really appreciated that he came over, um, you know, because I did I did feel left out, um, you know, going over. And again, I'm not going to drive the car. I am going to try and operate the radio. I am going to try and, you know, make the air conditioning or heat a certain temperature or turn my heated or air, con you know, cooled seat, you know, on and off, um, which fortunately is a tactile, <laughs> a tactile button slash dial. Um, you know, so that I, that I know I can do, um, you know, cause I did try it. It was, <laughs> it was, it was so cold in this area over the weekend that, um, you know, I did turn, I, and I don't like the heated seat that much, but it was so cold and I was so cold that uh, I turned it on for a couple of minutes uh, and it heated up so quickly. It was crazy how fast it was. And, and Liz was laughing at me because she, she's like, it can't be that hot that fast. And I, I said, it is. Turn yours on and see. Uh, she was wearing something heavier, so she wasn't cold like I was. Um, so, you know, they're going over everything and I'm like, okay, you know, and... Uh, you know, again, I felt left out. Um, and so when we did get in the car to come home, um, Liz said, uh, you know, 
you know, make sure Bluetooth is on your phone. I said, it's, it's on because, you know, I explained why I always have it on now. And she said, okay, well, we're going to pair the phone with the car. And I said, okay. I said, you can do more than one, do your phone. She's like, I already did. You can have multiples. I said, okay, cool. So, and I kind of think you know where this is going. So we do it, and then I can't use my phone. Because once it was paired with the car, voiceover didn't work at all. And she's like, well, just push this and that. I said, Liz, I can't see to push this and that because I don't know where it is. It's not, you know. So she tried a couple of other things, and uh, it just, it, we couldn't get it to work. Um, we couldn't get it to do voiceover or speak through the, through the phone. I'm sorry, through the car. Uh, so we took it off. And, you know, we'll, I'm sure we'll mess around with it again. And um, in the future, as time goes on, you know, when we go in for service or whatnot, you know, we'll see or I'll talk to somebody at Nissan. And there's so many different things that are available on this car. Um, some sort of concierge service and um, uh, all sorts of, you know, remote start. And, and this, obviously, this isn't very cool. I don't think, I mean, I guess it is if Liz doesn't have the key and she gets locked out. But you can start it from your phone, which... Not a big fan of that because if we can start it from our phone, somebody else can, somebody else can too. So, um, you know, so again, I felt, you know, so between being left out while they're going over everything and, um, you know, then the phone not, not being able to work with it and, uh, whatnot, you know, I felt like, well, you know, you know, it's not, it's not for me. I can't, you know, it's not something I'll be able to do a lot with, the, meaning, you know, the touch screen. Um, uh, and, and as I mentioned last week, with the Murano, there are probably more tactile buttons than uh, the two other cars that we looked at, the Honda Pilot, um, which was horrible, had no tactile buttons, uh, and um, the Toyota uh, Venza. Um, you know, so I can change the stations on the radio just by turning the dial. The presets are all part of a touch screen. So that I can't go from one preset to another. Now, we usually listen to um, Sirius XM. And fortunately, fortunately for me, the two stations that I like and or, or three stations that I like and listen to uh, are all within um, three or four stops. Uh, you know, Alt Nation is our favorite, Channel 36. Um, Sirius XMU is channel 35, so obviously one turn uh, down the dial. Uh, and again, it's a regular dial, so you just turn the button, turn the turn the knob, and you go down. And then uh, the other one that I like is uh, channel 33, which is, um, God, I forget what it's called, First Wave, which is basically, uh, you know, what used to be called New Wave, you know, from back, back when I had hair. And um, all the bands were coming from uh, the UK. Um, so, uh, uh, you know, so those I can get to, there are other stations that we listen to that Liz is programmed in. Liz loves, Liz loves the, uh, I think it's called Holly around the holidays, um, you know, Christmas songs. And there's a couple of other Christmas channels. I think there's even a Hanukkah channel. It doesn't, I don't listen to it, so it doesn't matter. Um, and, uh, uh, you know, so that I can get to. Volume, I don't know that I could turn up. I haven't, I haven't ridden in it enough to, you know, really get a feel for, you know, how it is. You know, we've gone, um, you know, not too far in it so far. The, the furthest Liz has been in it was taking Jane to the train station in Philly um, on Saturday. She went up to New York to get her hair cut and, um, uh, you know, have, she, she had hoped to go to her new apartment, but time ran out and she didn't get there. But, uh, the, the rates were re really, really cheap to go. So uh, that's why she did it and went to the salon that she did. Um, so Jane wrote in it probably, she, she's probably ridden more miles in it than I have. Uh, 30th Street Station in Philly is, you know, probably 15 miles or so from here. So uh, there and back, so there's 30. You know, Liz has, we, we've we've already put probably about 150 miles on it. Um by now, I know when I got in it on Sunday, which I'm recording on Thursday, the day the episode drops, um, we had a hundred and uh, 125 miles on it. When we got it, it had 25 miles. So, 
Um, we do put a lot of miles on cars. Um, <laughs> I have to tell you, every week when I record a podcast episode, I usually like to, you know, walk around a little bit. And I'm still using the same same headset with uh, with the boom arm in front of it. And But I like to walk around. I pace back and forth. The cord is, you know, probably uh, six or eight feet long. So I can pace back and forth like I like to do. And every week, it snags my my reading glasses um, and drops them on the floor. So every week after I do an episode, I put the glasses on. <laughs> and, you know, they're lopsided. Um, I'm sure there are scratches on them because last week they, they ended up face down on the floor. And the floor is not finished uh, here in Studio B or anywhere in our basement because we didn't know what we wanted to do, whether we wanted to get carpeting or you know, do some sort of hardwood or some sort of tile or, you know, you know, we're a little leery because, hey, it's a basement and a basement could flood and you know, hot water heaters on the other side of the wall of Studio B. So if that goes, uh, obviously everything on the floor will be, you know, sopping wet. So that's why we've hesitated putting a carpet. We've even, even thought about putting the carpet squares down where, you know, if one gets damaged, you just pop it out and pop in a new one. So we, we may do that. But every week, as I was just talking there, just the, the cord grabbed my glasses and put them on the floor. And they're not ones that I can just go to, you know, CVS or Rite Aid or, or any of the places to get them because they're a higher powered. So I can, you know, if I, if I want to, you know, try and see something on the computer, um, you know, they help me with that. So, uh, hope, hope I better get another pair because, you know, these are going to be <laughs> another couple of episodes. These are going to be junk. Um, but, uh, but yeah, with the car, it's just, you know, it's, it's frustrating because again, it's, you know, it's different and, you know, we're still getting used to it. And, and again, I haven't ridden, um, you know, we went to, uh, we, we went to Costco over the weekend and that's, uh, that's around 12 miles from here. So that's probably there coming home from the dealers, probably the longest I've been in it. And you know, still getting used to it. And, you know, it sits a little different, obviously, than the 10, 11 year old car that we had or almost 12 year old car we had. And, um, you know, everything is everything is a little bit different. And, you know, again, for me, not not being able to see that much of it, um, you know, I feel around for stuff. So, you know, I always have I always have jelly beans in the car. And um, I love the Starburst. I don't know if they're called jumbo jelly beans. Um, but, Easter of 2020, Liz bought a bunch of bags. So when Easter of 2021 came and she said, should I buy some more? I said, you know, we have so many, I hate to keep buying them and then end up using the wrong, you know, to, you know, doing them out of order. So, you know, they're starting to, they're starting to deteriorate a little bit, especially once they're in the car for, um, you know, for, for a couple of weeks. And it's not like I eat a lot of them, you know, if I eat more than three when I'm in the car, it's a lot because each each jelly bean, because of the size, they're around 20 calories. So finding a new home for them and finding a new home where we're going to put the tissues and where we're going to put the um, some of the other stuff, um, that was one thing with the pilot that we loved. There were tons of cup holders, tons of spaces. That, you know, there was a space on the passenger side in the front, you know, underneath where the airbag is, but above the glove box that it was like almost like a little compartment that didn't close, but you know, a little shelf with three little um, sections in it that you can put different things. And that's where I kept the jelly beans and, you know, a few other things. So we're still getting used to it and so forth. But, um, you know, we'll see, we'll see as time goes on, you know, how things go with it. I don't, I don't even have a key for it. Um, you know, they only gave us one key fob. And we can go back, Liz will go back um, once school is done. Uh, the guy who programs them only comes in on Mondays. So uh, we have to wait a couple of weeks. And um, and uh, so, you know, again, it drives real nice. Liz loves the way it rides. And, and again, it's, you know, it's, it's great. I just, you know, didn't want to be getting something <laughs> yet. I was hoping it would last another year. But, I mean, 11 years and 10 months, I guess, is something for the other car. And hopefully we can keep this one, you know, as long. Um, you know, the plan was not to be living here in this area in 10 years. Um, and, uh, you know, so we'll see. 
Uh, the other thing I wanted to talk about today uh, was something, a, a project that I'm working on, and I, I think I touched on it last week or week before, a new, I hate to call it podcast yet because, you know, the definition of a podcast is um, basically an audio file that gets distributed via an RSS feed. Otherwise, it's just an MP3. If you just do a show or do do you know, people talking, it's just an MP3 of people talking. And at the beginning, that's basically what this new project is going to be. It has a title now. It's called White Canes Connect, and it's going to be available on initially on the National Federation of the Blind of Pennsylvania website, nfbp.org. And I'm hoping it'll be at nfbp.org slash White Canes Connect, uh, but we haven't gotten that far yet. So, um, I am one of the hosts with Lisa, and um, and uh, Lisa has been on uh, back last October. She and Harriet were on this podcast when we talked about the, uh, oh my gosh, what was that called? <laughs> Believe You Can talent show. Man, I'm showing my age now, forgetting stuff. Um, but Lisa has been on, and, and Lisa's the one who I always talk about who she should absolutely have her own podcast, and I think she's so close. This will help. Another thing that will help, and um, this is something that you can check out um, because this was this was a really good, a really good thing. Um, she occasionally, hopefully more than occasionally in the future, uh, is on blind abilities, and I've talked about blind abilities in the past. If to me, it is the it is the pinnacle of podcasts for blind folks. Um, they have a lot of episodes that come out because there's a pretty big range of what they come out with. Sometimes they'll come out with um, a, episodes just on, you know, using your iPhone or um, talking to inter an interview with, with uh, you know, one or multiple people about a specific subject. Other times they do, they do a show called Tech Abilities, which is the main guy. His name is Jeff Thompson and um, a couple other folks um, talking about different tech things. Um, you know, mostly, mostly, you know, computer stuff that uh, most folks use, but sometimes just blind specific uh, devices like uh, Braille writers and, and that sort of stuff. Uh, stuff that I don't really even know about because, you know, I, I don't know how to read Braille. Um, and um, so, and I, I would love to be on it. I Simon had interviewed me um, for it uh, a couple of years ago when we were at Washington Seminar, but for whatever reason, it never got used. <clears throat> and, and I don't know why. I was part of the Blind Abilities WhatsApp group, and... Um, I got dropped from there. I don't know why. I, I didn't, uh, you know, I, you know, I participated very little, but I did participate. And then, you know, for whatever reason, I got, I got knocked off of there and, um, you know, whatever. I, I don't know if I said something wrong. I, I don't think I did because I, you know, I was just, you know, asking questions bas basically, or, you know, answering questions that, you know, somebody else might have answered. So, or asked. So for whatever reason, I got booted off of there, and um, you know, so so I guess I have very little, ch <laughs> I guess I have very little chance of ever being on that, and uh, that's a bummer because again, they 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 do you know tons and tons of downloads, and and as I mentioned, Simon uh, Simon does a lot of episodes for them uh, for blind abilities, and um, uh, his most recent one has to do with college because as he and I talked about when he was on this podcast, he's getting ready to start college in the fall. And, um, and, uh, you know, so, so he's on a lot and Lisa was on and, and the episode, and I'll link to it in the show notes, uh, because it was a really good episode and, and I'll have to, I'll have to tell you a funny story about that while I was listening. And then I'll talk more about White Canes Connect. Um, Lisa interviewed the director and the star, one of the stars of a short that was nominated for an Oscar this year called Feeling Through. And, um, you know, it was a really good episode. It's, it's about a, um, a deafblind uh, person uh, interacting with, uh, with a kid. And um, when I'm listening, 
<laughs> to the episode, I'm, you know, Lisa would ask a question of the, the star. His name is Robert. And I'm listening to the response. I'm like, boy, that guy sounds like a girl. It sounds like, and I listened over two days. And I haven't told Lisa this. I keep forgetting to tell her. Uh, I listened over two days. On the, when I listened the second day, I finally realized he's, he's deaf blind, so he's not answering the questions. Someone is answering them for him. And that's the person that I heard. At least that's what I believe. I mean, you know, again, maybe once I talk to Lisa about it, <laughs> I'll find out. But um, it's a really good interview, um, and it's available. I'll, I'll, I'll find the link, and I'll put it up. Uh, it's available with uh, audio description somewhere. I'm not sure it's YouTube. I think it's YouTube. But I'll put, I'll put the link to that up as well. But it's a really good interview. And, uh, you know, as I said to Lisa... When we had a guest at one of our Keystone chapter meetings, you know, she she kind of took over the questions to this person who she had already interviewed for for a, an article on a website. Um, and I texted her when the, the person that she was talking to, and we were all talking, and anybody could have asked questions, but she was doing a great job, so there was no need for anybody else to ask questions. And... And I said to her, I texted her, I said, this is why you should have your own podcast. And um, so, so we've, we've started this thing. It was, it was her idea, Lisa's idea. And um, we're hoping that uh, White Canes Connect, um, and it, again, it's going to be fairly specific, obviously, for blind folks. Um, it's going to talk about National Federation of the Blind stuff and the different and things that are going on within the chapters in the state of Pennsylvania. Um, there are, I, I think, I think Lynn said there are eight chapters and a couple of divisions. Um, so uh, those things that are going on um, within that, we hope to get, you know, if somebody's doing some sort of fundraiser, we'll talk about that and maybe, maybe talk to them uh, during an episode. At the beginning, we're only going to do a show each month. And the first one will drop um, on next week. Uh, I believe we're targeting the first Monday of the month. <laughs> the problem with that show compared to this show, there's a lot more editing. <laughs> there is a lot more editing. So, and it involves getting files from from Lisa because she's done interviews, um, and there are, um, you know, she and I. Uh, started the show, um, which we recorded, I, I guess, last week, <clears throat> with an interview with Lynn Heights, who is the president of the National Federation of the Blind of Pennsylvania. And <laughs> so, you know, I've got to edit that a little bit. I've got to edit um, the interview that Lisa did with Stacy Leap, who I interviewed and was on this podcast a couple weeks back. Um, so there's a lot more of that and, um, it's not quite as easy because I don't usually have the files. As I was saying, it's, you know, Lisa has to send me the files and we pick them up in Dropbox and, and so forth. So the bulk of the first episode is done, but we're doing the finishing touches on it tomorrow. Lisa and I are going to get together, um, and do... I don't want to call it an outro. Basically, it's going to be, you know, the last, you know, the last few minutes to ten minutes of the, of the episode where we go back and forth about a couple of things and then close the show. And, you know, I'm not happy with my, um, I guess the intro when I when we started the show off when we were talking to Lynn. So I have to re-record that, and Lisa has to re-record. Uh, the beginning of her uh, conversation with Stacy. So then I have to go and edit it and have it all done and then send to the guy who is going to put it on the nfbp.org website. And again, once I have that information, I will put it in the show notes and I'll, I'll talk about it again next week with the actual link. You know, but we're doing it in conjunction with the National Federation of the Blind of Pennsylvania, but I'm not sure when, <laughs> when there are expenses and there will be. Because when you do a podcast, you know, you have to find a podcast host and they cost money. And, you know, the website is taken care of, you know, at this point. But 
I think it would be better, and I always think this way, that's why I own 72 domain names, that if you have, even if you have a place on this website, and like I said, it'll probably be nfbp.org slash White Canes Connect. I don't want to say that on the show. I want to say, go to whitecanesconnect.com. And that could then point to that same page that I that I just mentioned. So, you know, obviously a domain name costs money, not a lot, you know, 10 bucks a year. You know, the domain hosting, um, I'm sorry, the podcast hosting, I pay $15 a month, you know, for, um, you know, for I Can't See You, the I Can't See You podcast. So I don't know if I have enough room where I could also have that on my hosting. You know, I'll have to see. And I don't know that if I put it on my hosting, how that works, where it doesn't, I don't want that counted with my numbers, obviously. Um, I'm hoping the numbers for White Canes Connect will be greater because there are, there's a potential of more built-in users right from the get-go, you know, than I have for, you know, for I Can't See You. So all those things I have to figure out. And, um, but I'm looking forward to it again. I, I, as I mentioned a while back, I do want to start another podcast, um, whether this one is the one um, or this is just in addition. And I'm hoping, and, and Lisa's hoping too, that as we get going with this, you know, maybe Simon will come in and do, you know, do some. And again, like I said, like I said, when I first mentioned this, he, we haven't talked to him yet about it and he may not want to. And, you know, obviously if it jeopardizes anything with blind abilities, um, you know, he certainly shouldn't do it because again, blind abilities to me is the pinnacle of, of podcasts for blind folks. And, and there are others out there. Um, you know, I listened to a show called that real blind tech show, which is with the, uh, commissioner of the all blind, uh, fantasy football and the all blind fantasy hockey. And, um, his name is Brian Fischler. Um, you know, I listened to a couple others, but, uh, you know, you know, blind abilities to me is the, is the top, you know, a lot of different things besides the tech stuff. Um, and, uh, you know, a lot of folks listen to it. Uh, Simon seemed to think, uh, if I recall correctly, 25,000 downloads a month, I think, you know, I mean, that's a lot. <clears throat> that's a lot to me at least. So, you know, obviously, you know, he doesn't, he sh can't jeopardize that. And again, he also has school coming up. So, you know, whether he has time to do stuff, you know, that's another story as well. So, um, so look for that. And again, I'll put the, I'll put the link in the show notes once I have it. Um, you know, again, very blind specific, uh, Pennsylvania blind specific. I mean, I guess if you're blind and you're outside of this area, you can kind of see what uh, the NFB of Pennsylvania is doing and, you know, each uh, chapter is doing. You know, every every chapter does different things, you know, to raise money and to, um, you know, stuff they do with their members, um, you know, and, uh, you know, so that'll be good to hear. And I think it's good for, for all the folks to hear, you know, everybody in the NFB uh, of PA to hear, you know, oh, this chapter in Erie is doing this, this, and this. Oh, we should do something like that. That sounds pretty cool. It sounds like something that would be fun to do and might be worthwhile or whatever. You know, so it'll, it'll just help everyone within the NFB of Pennsylvania, um, you know, get some ideas. And, uh, and, uh, you know, and so, you know, if you're in Missouri and you're listening, um, you know, it might give that person some ideas, just like I got some ideas from, uh, from someone, um, when I was at Washington seminar a couple of years ago, um, uh, that, you know, we talked about doing, you know, with the Keystone chapter and, and, you know, it was what, what I was talking with, with this person would have been more appropriate to talk about for the entire NFB of Pennsylvania, not just, you know, the one chapter, you know, so it'll be good. The, you know, again, everybody will get connected. <laughs> um, so, and that is the, uh, and that is the name and, and the name was a play, you know, we asked for suggestions and, um, uh, before we even had put it out there, when, when Lynn and Lisa and I had first talked before we, we started recording anything, you know, months, you know, a month ago, um, we talked about different names, and I had come up with White Cane Connection. And Lynn really liked that and ran that by a couple of people, and they really liked that. But 
we got one that I really liked a lot more. And, and as soon as I heard that, I didn't want to, I didn't want to use any other name. And um, the name was called Insight. And I like that because it's kind of like that play on word, you know, it's a blind podcast, you know, for blind folks and it's got the word sight in it and all that play. Um, Lynn didn't like it so much because, you know, A, there's, there's a couple of other podcasts called Insight, not blind related, but just in general. And there was an organization um, that had a similar name that was blind related. And she thought, you know, there's so many, if there's so many ones called Insight, you know, podcasts, you know, maybe we should pick something else. And then Lisa came up with the name White Canes Connect instead of White Cane Connection. Um, and uh, so we went with it. And um, and it'll grow on me. And, you know, now we just have to make a little logo. So we have it for the, you know, for the cover art, um, which, um, you know, until it's an actual podcast. And it, it may be something that we can put on Spotify very quickly. Um, Spotify is easy to get on, it seems. Um, and, uh, you know, Apple podcast is where the, you know, there's usually a little bit of an issue. So we'll see. But again, it's called White Canes Connect. And I will put the link, um, again, once I know it, um, on the, uh, show notes of this and future episodes. So you can check it out if you want. Um, again, it's going to be pretty blind specific. So, um, you know, if you're interested in National Federation of the Blind stuff, of Pen the NFB of Pennsylvania stuff, then, you know, you can check it out. Um, or you just like to hear my voice and don't get enough of me on this. <laughs> and you can also see, the best is, you can see how great Lisa is. And then you can contact her to tell her to do her own show. <laughs> because I've been telling her for, I don't know, maybe a year now. Um, but, uh, but I'm looking forward to that. And again, I'm still considering doing another show doing another podcast, um, non, not blind related. Um, you know, cause I, I don't do a lot of blind related stuff. I try to figure out, as I said, a few episodes ago, um, try to figure stuff out and get it done and, you know, do something that I really like to do. That's why I listen to all the podcasts I listen to are, um, most of them other than a few blind ones are, um, affiliate marketing, digital marketing related, um, design related, um, you know, for better or for worse, that's what I like. And that's what I listen to. So, um, so that's, uh, you know, that's the story with White Canes Connect. And um, one last thing I wanted to mention, uh, Amazon announced their Prime Day um, for a couple weeks from now, uh, 21st and 22nd of June. And I wanted to remind folks uh, that when you use my affiliate link to go to Amazon, doesn't cost anything extra to you when you use it. Um, but I do earn a small commission, just like at the beginning, I talked about the White King Coffee Company and the Keystone chapter that the Keystone earns a 10% commission when you make a purchase at White King Coffee, when you use the affiliate link, which there's a thing that you can use. And that's why you go to icansu.com slash coffee that has the affiliate link built into it. That is not the affiliate link, but it is embedded in icansu.com slash coffee. Um, so same thing goes with Amazon. If you're thinking about buying something on Prime Day, um, you can go to icansu.com slash Amazon and whatever you purchase when you go through that link, I will earn a commission. Now it's not 10%. I wish it were. <laughs> um, they range from, uh, 3% up to about 8%. Uh, depends on the category that you're buying from and, um, and so forth. So, uh, I would really appreciate that again. I can see you.com slash Amazon. And if you can't wait until prime day, you know, you can just go there now and make a purchase. Um, so, uh, you know, I'd, I'd appreciate that immensely and it would help pay for some of those hosting costs and, <laughs> and other things, uh, you know, for the, uh, I can't see you podcast. Um, so again, prime day, a couple of weeks, 21st and 22nd, I can't see you.com slash Amazon and uh, I will, well, and Liz and the kids will appreciate that and earn that money. And if you want coffee from the White Cane Coffee Company, I can't see you.com slash coffee. Again, that benefits the Keystone chapter. That does not benefit me. And again, I appreciate if you do both or either. And, uh, and I really appreciate you listening to episode 128. I, every time I do a new episode and I, 
you know, each week it grows higher and higher. I'm always amazed. I do appreciate your support over all 128 episodes or whenever you started listening. And I hope you're staying safe. It looks like things are finally starting to break and opening up, at least here in Pennsylvania. It also looks like Jane will be heading back into the office in New York uh, within the next month or so. Uh, At the beginning, only a couple days a week. And I probably will have some exciting news to share next week with you. But for now, we'll hold off on that. Uh, But I really do appreciate you listening and continue to stay safe, be well, and I will talk to you next week. Thank you for listening to the I Can't See You podcast with David. Please rate, review, and subscribe to the podcast wherever you listen. And don't forget to share the podcast with your friends.